Bonjour, I'm Tim. I'm Karen. And welcome to another edition of Living a French Life. Well, it's a very exciting episode of Living a French Life. Uh, I've managed to drag Karen up onto the uh, premier etage. <laughs> there, there's no floor up here. There, uh, there is the OSB that you carried in. Yes, but it is not attached and it makes me nervous. <laughs> and it's also, there are some quantity of uh, owl droppings too that you have to sort of manage. Anyway, yeah. here we are. <laughs> It's true. Yes. Uh, the reason I brought us up here, actually it was Karen's idea, but I forced her to continue on with yeah, the idea. Yeah, then I kind of reevaluated. <laughs> I didn't think it was the best idea, but voila. This is where the floorboards that Karen's been working on originated. They were up here on the Premier Etage. Right, and we decided rather than attempt to refinish them in place, they needed to come up. We're moving the staircase, so it was creating a, a different hole in the floor. There was a lot of rot that we had to deal with, and there was a large quantity, a couple centuries worth of dirt and debris. So we pulled all, the, Tim pulled <laughs> all of the boards up, and then we began the process of removing the nails and refinishing the boards. Tim will then reinstall the floorboards, and uh, I hope we have a really great recycled refurbished uh, floor. So we're gonna get some details on that. Uh, also, we're gonna take an impromptu trip to Paris. Ooh, we yes. are. Yeah, exactly. So, I love Paris. so hang tight and we'll get to that in just a moment. So like and subscribe and we're off to talk about the floorboards. Okay, so now here Karen is going to show you what they end up looking like. This is the goal. Uh, and it takes a lot of labor to get to this place. Not a lot of expense, but a lot of labor. And you can tell I've been, I've been working on it today. And in order to get to this point, the boards have to be removed. They have to have the nails removed. They need to have the, what are these, the grooves have to be cleaned out because they are caked with animal droppings, old insects, uh, and a lot of dirt. And then after that, then they get cleaned because there's so much dirt and grime on the board when we attempted to sand them first, all we wound up doing was clogging up the paper and that didn't seem to really work well. So we actually wash the boards and then they get four thin layers of bleach in order to whiten them. The very first board we did, and I think we have some video of that, but the very first board we did was, it looked like a tire. Really orange, uh, black stripes from the saw marks, and it looked terrible. So I decided I wanted to lighten the boards, and the best way to do that, and a very economical way to do that, is by using bleach. And after that process, they get sanded because the grain has been raised from the water. They get sanded, they get uh, a coating of lime wax and then a clear wax coat. And then after that, Tim will reinstall them and they will be waxed and buffed in place. Next up, our trip to Paris. We had this idea. It was a good <laughs> idea in this last summer. Yeah. Uh, the idea was that we would all get together for Christmas since we weren't able to be together for Christmas last year because of, well, that little pandemic thing. Yes, well, it turns out the pandemic found us again, and there was this question of, of uh, how to get everybody down to Southwest France. Uh, we had booked uh, flights and uh, an Airbnb for Paris, uh, train tickets for our son, plane tickets from our daughter to join us all in Paris, and we were all gonna meet up. Well, we didn't all make it. We didn't all make it. Yes. But we did end up in Paris, yes. and so I thought I'd show you a few things that we shot. One of our favorite cities, Paris is filled with iconic sites. From the Eiffel Tower to the Champs Elysees, from Montmartre to Versailles, you can spend a month and still not see it all. The capital of France, Paris, is a huge city. The greater metropolitan area has a population of over 14 million.
Unfortunately, it's just not that close to us. We are in the south, and Paris is in the north. It's about a seven-hour drive away. Cafes and patisseries, and Karen's favorite gelato, are tucked in among some of the most easily recognizable places in the world. This little tea shop is where Marie Antoinette would come, 1672. It's still in the original spot, and the tea tins are beautiful. So if you're looking for something special to bring back to someone, um, I can't recommend this shop enough. This last trip, we enjoyed a visit to the Musée d'Orsay. Housed in a restored train station, it contains mainly French art from the mid-1800s to just before World War I. You can see art by Monet, Manet, Degas, Morisseau, Renoir, Cezanne, Toulouse-Lautrec, and of course, Vincent van Gogh. You can even see one of the two Statues of Liberties in Paris. The other one is on an island in the middle of the Seine. For me, I get a special thrill seeing paintings that I remember from my history books. If you make a trip to Paris, make the Musée d'Orsay a must-see. We almost got blocked from the Louvre. It was sold out for the day, but we lucked into some special exhibition tickets that gained us entry. Just like all of Paris, there is so much to see. Since we were there at Christmas time, we made sure to visit the Gallery Lafayette, one of the fanciest shopping experiences you could ever hope for. I'll put links to a couple of Karen's weekly voilas that talk about the Parisian life. Personally, I can't wait until we visit again. Ooh. It's very sparkly. Yes, is the Eiffel Tower all sparkly? Oh yeah, that's so, just a little oh, bit of. Now. Uh, this is hey, like this thing. You're talking on my thing. All right. This wood is not really anything special, other than the fact that it is absolutely ancient. It is a pine, a fir, maybe a cypress. We're really not sure. I have not yet been able to identify it. I'm leaning towards a pine of some sort, uh, based on some of the sap that I've found. Yes, there is actually still sap in this wood. It's crazy. Um, but it is very old. Um, Tongue and Groove uh, came to Europe in about uh, the early 1830s, 1840. And, uh, and this is really thick. So I'm, I'm going to guess that it is probably mid-19th uh, century, mid-1850s, mid I would say. And uh, it is, the wood that is good is solid, so it's going to support our weight. And it's still going to require a little bit of uh, Tim Carpentry magic to make it look good when it goes down. Uh, the wood itself, Karen's done a fantastic job, as you can see, with the, uh, yeah, I'm really with the waxing. With that looks great. Yes. Uh, but to put it down in a pattern that looks good, that's going to be another thing. Tell us how you did it, Karen. Well, we talked about waxing and use two different products. Uh, this is a lime wax or just a white wax and it helped uh, further knock down the red and the orange of the boards. You know, if red and orange is your thing, then you could have gone just right ahead and put a polyurethane coating down. You could do whatever you want. I like, I like a good floor wax um, made with a beeswax. So that's my preference. So the Lime wax worked great, and then we're just using a clear wax over top. We're going to go through a few cans of these, and uh, but this is a made in France. It uh, is beeswax, yep. Liberon. It's a it's great, very famous brand. It's great, and it it's working well, and uh, it's giving us the look that we're that we're after, yeah. and it's allowing us to repurpose, reuse the floorboards that are up here, and. That means they don't go into the landfill. That means we don't have to come up with several thousand euros worth of um, 
budget in order to do that first floor and I think it's gonna look great. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, it's a nice thick wood, so better quality than what you're gonna find uh, at the stores today. And I tell you what, you know what, there's something magical as you're working with the wood and you find the pencil marks on here from some long ago carpenter as he was yeah. trying to figure out exactly how to lay out the boards. Yeah. That's very cool. It adds the story for the house and we really appreciate that. We're going to be putting the floor down just the way it was uh, when we pulled it up, meaning we aren't going to uh, create any subfloor or put a floating floor on that. The underside of that board becomes the ceiling for the ground floor. And so for that, we'll do a simple um, stain that'll go on there, roughly about what it is, and it'll match the, the beams that you're going to see in the ceiling downstairs. Many hands make light work when it came to this project, and I'm really appreciative of those that have helped. Uh, my son was here for the holidays, our son was here for the holidays, and he helped, and my mother's helped, and our neighbor Maurice has just given us a lot of help in preparing these boards and getting them ready to go back into their place. Yeah. I don't know how much of it is the French people. I don't know how much of it is people who live in the country. I, I just know that these people around yeah. here are fantastic. They have, they have been nothing but helpful. Yes. And we've, we've needed help, so that's, <laughs> that's made the transition that much better. We've had a lot of confirmation that we have indeed found the right place for us. We really love where we're at, we love our neighbors, we love exploring the countryside, and every bit that we do to help restore this, this little house at Glendine, uh, it feels like the right thing to do. There's a lot of work to be done here, and sometimes the project feels endless. This floor, for one, it just seems like it's never going to end. Uh, but somehow the nails all get pulled, and the boards all get uh, sanded and waxed, and eventually we'll have a finished floor up here. And every time we walk on it, it's going to feel like something special because we accomplished it. So, like and subscribe, and. Click the little bell icon so you know when the new videos come out. And uh, don't forget to stick around till the end, the outtakes. And uh, I also, oh, one more thing. I want to say hi to Lainey and Will. They're two of our youngest video watchers. <laughs> They're in Lakewood. That's awesome. Ohio, yes, very yeah. exciting. All right. And we do appreciate all of our subscribers, Absolutely. all your support, suggestions, and questions. So until next week. A tutela. I got forever with you. It's a pretty clean morning. It's gonna hold our weight. It's okay. Hold our weight. All right. Better hold our weight. Oh my God. <laughs> Freaking me out. Okay. Oh my gosh. You're fine. Don't worry. Oh. He's moving. He's moving. He's moving. No, I can't wait to be down. Okay. Not down though. Okay. Very good. Well, it's a very exciting episode of Living a French Life. I was fixing my hair. <laughs> White. One moment. What is that dog? Is that our dog? I could be our dog. Well, you don't have to move. Okay, thank you. Pause. Cow. Totally solid. You can not possibly... No, not there. Walk one more step towards the hole. Walk that, that way. Yes, keep going. No, keep going. Do not walk on the crack. Walk there. Yes, straight ahead. Okay, I'm, honey, do you want me to go and help you? I'm going to get down for myself. <laughs>